This week in our audio tech segment, OBD2 scanners. Now, what is OBD2? OBD2 stands for Onboard Diagnostic and 2 indicates this is the second revision to that standard. It was initially started in this state as part of CARB, the California Air Resource Board, a way to kind of minimize or at least track emissions from automobiles because smog was a big issue. Actually, still is a big issue. Uh, <laughs> breathing in all those... Uh, you need to be able to taste the air. Yes. That's a good that's a sign that, of quality. That healthy brown <laughs> glow uh, when you breathe in that it morning like air. tastes like burning. <laughs> Anyway. Any case, uh, it was mandated uh, by the EPA as starting in 96 that they implement OBD2 uh, pl- uh, plugs into automobiles uh, sold in the U.S. that essentially look like this. Now, all modern automobile uh, cars sold in the U.S., uh, I think gasoline powered cars from 96 on up, will have one of these somewhere along or underside the dash. Cool. And you plug one of these into a scanner, and one of these scanners can essentially give you information about your car by reading the data from the car, uh, the computer that manages the fuel injection, uh, fuel injection and, and off throttle and all the other idling issues regarding uh, emissions control. We'll give you air codes for things like the check engine light. Oh, yeah. So anything related to an engine running, including che- you know, check engine light, uh, whether it's throttle, whether it's uh, in- fuel injection more emissions. check engine light some more. Yes. Well, one of these items that you can get is this uh, scan tool, CAN OBD2, two-in-one kit. Uh, this comes from uh, Inovia. It's a great product. Now, the thing is, this runs around $400, but it's actually worth, I think, every penny because using this over the weekend, I actually went over to Patrick's place to run on his truck. Um, there were a few things uh, that weren't working on his, so we tried it on this other truck, and he pulled out one of the O2 sensors, and it gave me a big uh Warning, saying that there was an issue with it. Actually, I actually have some B-roll of uh, some of the stuff it will show you. Right here, I have it running on my car. And this is the live data. This is giving me all the information that the computer is putting out about my uh, Toyota's uh, engine running. So it will give you uh, throttle control, uh, emissions, and a few other things that I'm not quite familiar with. some RPM there. RPM. Vehicle uh, speed. And temperatures. It, uh, temperature. So everything that you need to essentially diagnose issues. Now, your car's computer will issue a warning anytime there's kind of a failure in one of the sensors, whether it's an O2 sensor, throttle sensor, temperature sensor on the thermostat, anywhere in the engine, it will show up here. It will record it as what they call a DTC, a a diagnostic trouble code. This will merely tell you that that sensor is throwing off a warning light. It doesn't tell you that you've got to go replace a specific item. So once you see a warning on one of these, you shouldn't run out and go and like buy a replacement part without actually figuring out what that error uh, is uh, regarding. Because okay. sometimes it could just be a bad sensor. Sometimes it could just be a blockage that's causing an abnormally high or low reading. So it's not one of those things that, okay, I have a warning. I should go buy $500 worth of replacement parts first. Oh, but it tells you where to look. Exactly. It gives you a place to start so you can then do a little more uh, a comprehensive search on finding out. Did the wh- tube just come off, or yeah. do you need to replace the tube? And that then, kind of thing. And once you have it, you can actually link it up. And this is where I was talking about the uh, p- hey uh, serial port, you connect this to your PC with a uh, serial port, and uh, through the serial port, and you get all the codes or issues that you have, actually, since my card doesn't have any problems, it won't list any, um, <laughs> but oh. if, it, if, if it was a crappier car that was spewing smog and things were all falling off, uh, instead of being a relatively recent new car. Or somebody uh, took apart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody stole apart just randomly. Now, if you want codes, this will give you all the codes that will start flashing up here if you have issues, and you can find out what it means. So it has certain letters, numbers, and each location will indicate whether it's part of the engine, the chassis, or the... Uh, Dare I say there are probably a thousand things that this uh, can yes, cover? Yes, yes. There's a lot. So it's one of those things that you should be somewhat familiar with uh, working on a car with before you go out and buy one of these. But if you're comfortable or you're just kind of a hobbyist, it might be a good thing. They do sell cheaper versions. Uh, this one is expensive because this covers both OBD2 and OBD1. So cars prior to 96 that have OBD2s, but they have different plug requirements as well, interface patterns. So could you save a little money by going with, uh, if you had newer vehicles, going uh, with a different product maybe? Yes, you could. You could, uh, I think they would sell a much cheaper one around 150 That's a, f- a little bit limited uh, compared to this one, but they have a... a 
good range, as well as other companies sell similar products, so I encourage you to check those all out. Um, this is available, I believe, at Cragen. Uh, it used to be Grand Auto. Or actually, no, they bought Grand Auto uh, in the Bay Area. I don't know if, they're, if it's available outside yeah, of this. Go on the company's website and look that up. <laughs> now, if you want something that connects your OBD2 port, but not necessarily full-on diagnostic, you can get one of these. This is a CarChip Pro. It's a runs 120 bucks. It's from uh, Davis Instruments. Actually, they lo they're located out here in Hayward. Hey. Uh, it's great. Essentially, what this does is records everything from your car's computer during a drive. Wonderful. So it's kind of a, a, a trip computer of sorts. And once you have it, you plug it into your PC, USB based, so you don't have to worry about serial ports. I actually have this running, so let me open up uh, a previous car chip right here, and then we can go into the. Uh, let's see. Oh, let's go to the home. We can go through and we can get a little uh, a diagram of how I was driving. Since it, you can allocate mileage to a particular trip, I have six trips. I went to the grocery store. Uh, actually, not mileage. How many times I turned on uh, the engine on and off. Grocery store, I did a bunch of errands. So this is giving me my general speed for the uh, trip six, as well as engine RPM and coolant temperature. This gives me a good idea whether or not I've been gunning the engine, you know, whether or not I've kept the, uh, the same speed. Great for longer trips, not so much on the shorter trips. So, Great way to kind of figure out your driving habits. Plus, if you're not kind of too trustful about your uh, kids taking the car, you can figure out where they've been, I was gonna or at least how, distance. How long, ha how long will it record for, though? Is there um, a in terms of like storage capacity? I, there is a limit, but I have not run into it yet. So it would go for, like say, at least a, a full day and to be able to I think you should be able to do a full day, with a, uh, like if you're doing a road trip down to Disneyland or then something. Then you can bust Grandma for speeding. Say, Grandma, <laughs> it's, yeah, keep it under 100, <laughs> baby. It's a, it's a great way to figure <laughs> out your driving habits, as well as kind of giving you a record of uh, your previous uh, trips and stuff. So you can figure out, oh, okay, I've been maybe speeding through this part uh, too much as well as figuring out, hey, maybe I should get my car in it for a tune-up because I've been keeping the same speed, but my, uh, my mileage or my miles per gallon has been dropping. So it's a good way to kind of keep the tab on things. Good deal. Great way to kind of tech up your car. But no, no specific diagnostic features, just reporting of, uh, reporting, you, of engine events like you, temperature speed. I mean, not. you do have uh, just reports, but you can kind of figure out whether or not. Ooh, it's, it's got a G sensor, huh? Yeah. It's not the, <laughs> it, it wouldn't be the same league as this OBD scanner that I was talking about before, but it can give you a, a good chunk of data. That's pretty cool. I like the G-sensor stuff. <laughs> See if Grandma slams on the brakes.